today we take a look into a very fashionable club at our school and its history in the school and outside in the community. And a Penn Trafford class is bringing the fall play to life right here in our classrooms. Stay tuned to find out what this class is doing for the play. All this and more on today's episode of Wake Up Warriors. Live from Penn Trafford High School. <laughs> this is Wake Up Warriors. Wake Up Warriors starts now. Hello and good morning, Penn Trafford, and welcome back to Wake Up Warriors. Today is Thursday, September 28th. I'm Morgan Arlia. And I'm Julianne Fontano. The Penn Trafford Fashion Club has new plans for this school year, but it also has a short and impactful history. We sent out Lily and Mo Meyer to find out more about how they've helped our school and community. The Penn Trafford Fashion Club meets every other Thursday after school and is run by its new leaders, Lily and Mo Meyer and Mia Morelli. But the Fashion Club has had a short but fascinating past. Hi, my name is Mrs. Sanoski and I help with the Fashion Club. I am the teacher sponsor. The Fashion Club is going about five years in now. We started a few years back with a student that was interested in doing more with the fashion classes than we were offering. So we started a club after school where a few students meet and together we work on projects for various reasons. We've done charity projects like fleece blankets for nursing homes and we've done projects in turn with the media center. We helped create a backdrop for the holiday events they were offering for Santa Claus. Last year we did our first big fundraiser where we all created by hand felt embroidered hearts and sold them for some money so that we could work to go on field trips and explore some more fashion outlets. The Fashion Club has a long history of students that are part of the fashion further education, meaning um, it was started by Eric Frankenfield a few, quite a few years back. He is a Kent State fashion student. Maddie Frutos, she helped run it with Angelina DiMatteo, and they're both working on fashion programs. Maddie also is at Kent State. The club's past leader, Angelina DiMatteo, set up a Karen closet and worked alongside the fashion club to help start it up. Last year, Angelina was a senior, and for her senior project, she started the Caring Closet. She also happened to be the president of the Fashion Club, so it helps have that connection between them a lot, and I hope to keep that going uh, in the future as it's been a really big support system for the closet. We would love if you join us. You don't have to have any experience in the fashion world or sewing. We'll help and we'll teach, and that's part of why we get together, to teach each other our skills and socialize and to put some like minds together. This was Lillian Momaya reporting for PTTV. Attention seniors, please be sure to check your email as soon as possible and vote for this year's senior superlatives for the class of 2024 yearbook. Don't delay because the form will be turned off at 225 today. Maddie Longo talked to Mrs. Thornton and some of her yearbook students to find out more. I just want to let all the seniors know that I sent out senior superlative voting forms and those forms are going to close today at 225. There are 25 separate categories, all sent separately by form. There's a lot of superlatives that we do every single year. So this year we were trying to come up with a couple different ones, like most likely to teach at PT. That's a fun one. Um, there's also the most likely to be Facebook mom or dad. We were just trying to do something different that hasn't been done before. Yeah, there's a lot of ties right now. So if you haven't voted yet, make sure to vote. Astronomy Club will have its first meeting of the year next Wednesday at 2.30 after school. This meeting will be the kickoff for the year and help plan for future events for our club. The meeting will be held upstairs in the planetarium. Please plan accordingly and we hope to see you there. Mrs. Haberberger's theatrical design class is working hard to design and construct the sets for the fall play Romeo and Juliet together and alive at last. We sent out reporter Sophia Lasmina to sit down with two students in the class to find out more. Hi, my name is Amanda Bobish. I am a theatrical design student in Mrs. Haberberger's fourth period class. So what we've been doing is drawings of scene by scene and so set by set. And we have done notes of each scene of like what we need set wise, what we need props wise, all that stuff. And right now we're gonna take all that kind of like messy scratch work and we're gonna turn it into a slide presentation. 
where it's all neatly compiled so that we can show the director and kind of present our ideas. So basically we're designing in theatrical design, we're designing the entire set for the fall play. So we design every part of it, each scene. So we're busy trying to construct all of these and put these together. For instance, we have a classroom scene and then we have a hallway scene. And then um, in act two, the big set piece is this massive false proscenium, which is like a frame a second stage basically on the stage um, for this um, comedic and messy performance of Romeo and Juliet which does not go according to plan. I totally recommend coming to see the show Romeo and Juliet together and the live at last. The shows are November 10th, 11th, and 12th and I hope to see you there because it'll be a lot of fun. Now it's time for the sports rundown. Good morning Lily, what do you have for us? Tessa Whipple has been nominated for the Max Preps Pennsylvania High School Athlete of the Week Award. Please see the PTTV Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook pages for the link to vote. You can vote as many times as you want. Currently, Tasso is in second, trailing by 3,000 votes. Come on, PT. Get your phones out and vote as many times as you can. Voting will conclude on Monday at noon. <coughs> there will be some incredible performances this weekend at the Cross Country World. In the cross country world. Each week, the PA Mile Split Crew nominates multiple athletes and allows you to vote for the runner of this week. This week, the, our very own Amelia Barilla has been nominated for the runner of the week. This week's poll will close today at 11 59 p.m. Annabella Kino and Maya Kochasek made it to the quarter finals of section doubles where they ultimately lost in their very close match to the second seed of the tournament. Franklin Regional won 10-7, their first match against Norwin 10-1. Last night, the girls' soccer team had their annual Kick It For A Cause game against Franklin Regional. The girls fought hard but would end up losing 1-0. At halftime, there was a crossbar challenge and raffles in support of Luca Lara a Sunrise student who was diagnosed with a brain tumor this summer. If you want to support the boys' team, ha their boys' team has their game tonight for the same cause at 7.30. For more information, see the flyer online. The JV Lady Warriors won 3-0. Addie Schwartz, Justine Jackson, and Lauren Francis, Francis, each with one goal, Kylie McClintock, and Mary Brabist with one assist. The Lady, the Lady Warriors host Norman this Saturday. Tonight in sports, the field hockey team travels to take on Ellis High School today at 4.30. At 7.30, the boys soccer team hosts Franklin Regional and Warrior Stadium. Good luck to our Warriors tonight. Anyone who is planning to attend Friday's football game at Norman must buy their tickets online. There are no tickets sold at the gate. Tickets can be purchased at norwinsd.hometickets.com ticketing.com. If you do not buy your ticket online, you will not be able to enter the stadium. That's all I have for sports today. Now let's send it back to Morgan and Julianne at the desk. Thanks, Lily. That's all for our show today. Please stand for the flag. I'm Morgan. And I'm Julianne. Have, have a, a great, great day, PT. PT.